Octavia sighed, staring up at the wooden ceiling despondently. One of her hind legs was swinging back and forth, or as, as the fourth on the couch, as her head rested against someone's lap. For the life of her, she couldn't remember who it was she was resting against, but it felt familiar, warm even. Their voice responded in her sigh, but it was distorted, an eerie mess of vocals. She couldn't even hear the voice anymore, yet she somehow knew exactly what they were saying. I'm just sad, Octavia murmured, sighing again and rolling onto her side. I don't want to go back home. I hate it there. The voice spoke again, that same garbled gibberish as before. Well, yeah, I don't care. I don't like how they treat me. I just, I just want to stay here forever. Another response, though, one isolated anger at the young filly. She rolled onto her back and pointed up at the face she could not see. No, no parties. I am sick of parties. Octavia woke up with a sharp gasp, pain racking in her chest. She was doubled over coughing, bringing her hoof to her mouth as her insides ratted violently. There, it was several moments before her coughing subsided and her breathing began to calm, although it, the pain still lingered. In things that finally settled, enough. She pulled her hoof back and saw what she had coughed up was blood. She groaned loudly, pushing herself up on the cold cement floor, and her head was spinning as she focused her eyes on the dimly lit room, trying to figure out where she was. The details started to fall into place. She felt her heart sick. It was a small, square, concrete room of full from her nightmares. The room she always found herself in again, and again, and again. Had everything been a dream then? Were their last few hours of nothing but a vivid hallucination? She was trapped in her own head once again? She tried to move her body, and a sharp pain made her collapse. Her chest convulsing with coughs once more. Her pain echoed in the tiny room, each violent cough seeming louder than it actually was. When it fit, had her fit had calmed down finally, she groaned and lifted her head looking down at her body at the center of her chest where the tendril had pierced her. It was freshly recovered scar tissue. Touching her chest with a hoof, she could feel the ridges in her healed skin underneath the coat. Turning back to look at the rest of her body, she saw that every wound had been inflicted on her head and since she received the same treatment. Every single one scarred over. The pain she felt, the scars on her body, the sinking realization in her gut, Everything had experienced today had been real. She was trapped in this nightmarish hell. But if it was true, then where am I? Octavia muttered out loud. Something sifted in the corner of the room, and she let out a yelp, fumbling against the ground until she was scooting away from it, starting into the dark corner, panting heavily. Her eyes took a moment to adjust, but when they did, her eyes went wide. There was a dead body in the corner of the room, back pressed up against the wall, gnarled black hair hanging down from its head and covering its body. It was laying on the pool of long since dried blood, and its body was faded to white gray. A cockroach moved around the body, stopping to flick its antennas about, before scuttering away and vanishing. A hoof to Octavia's mouth in horror as she hit the wall, trying to put as much distance as she could between her and the body in the tiny room. The fear, the dread, the anxiety, the reality of everything she had seen and felt it being real crashed down upon her all at once. She had never escaped her nightmares. They had to simply bled into reality. No, 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 no! Octavia shuddered, lowering her head and pressing down between her hooves. Her body was racked with fear, quaking at her every core. All this pain and torment was far, far too much, and she wasn't even being given the courtesy of death. She was forced to survive and endure this continued night torment. No, no, please, Octavia stuttered, her sobs echoing out, please, no more, I'm sorry. Hitch sobs continued to flow from Octavia as she laid up curled up on the cold cement floor. She had never wanted any of this, and she never had any of meant this to happen. She just, she let out a long whine, lifting up her head enough to slam it down against the ground, a fresh pain rattling in her senses as she shuddered and sniffled, rubbing her face as her sobs began to calm down. 
It's, it's going to be okay, Octavia, she muttered to herself, curling up tighter into a ball. It will be okay. You're just okay. Just stay calm, Octavia. She muttered to herself, repeating the words again and again. You're okay, Octavia. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. Again and again, she repeated to herself that it'll be okay, you'll be okay. She needed to reassure herself again, and again, and again. It was hard to believe that the words were coming out of her own mouth, to actually believe that everything was going to be okay. After all the hardships, and after all the pain, after all the nightmares she had faced, how could anything be okay? But she repeated the words again, but just as she always had. When everything was going wrong, when everything went hurt, when the world was putting her down, she repeated the mantra that had gone through so many awful times before. With one last hiccup and another rub in her face, Octavia placed a hoof on the floor and slowly managed to stand herself up. Her legs were wobbly again and still echoed throughout the body, but she couldn't stay in that room. She refused to stay in that one place of her nightmares. Shifting around, she spotted a small wooden door table in the opposite corner of the room from the body, her saddlebag on top of it. She was about to question as to how they got there, before shaking her head at the thought. There was no point in questioning at this point. She walked over to the table and reached a hoof out to retrieve the saddlebag. I watched. A deep, distorted voice woke up from within the bag, causing Octavia to flinch and pull her hoof back. I could do nothing but watch. When everything was over... I saw myself through the gap. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Octavia paused for a moment, staring at the saddlebag before letting out a huge sullen sigh as her ears flattened against her head, looking away. No, I'm not certain that the only me is me. She then spoke softly. She then reached out for her bag and opened up, pulling out the tiny phonograph and listened to it spark to life. The gap in the door, the phonograph static. It's a death separate reality. You can make it through that realm. Can you learn the truth that you've locked away? I've not much choice in the matter, do I? Octavia mur murdered, muttered, staring at the device as it continued to cackle. The voice yet so familiar from her dreams, from the nightmares she had experienced again and again. She never knew where that voice came from before, always too afraid to look inside the bags, the voice that had spoken from. Who are you? You already knew the answer to that question, the voice spoke, growing more and more distorted before finally cutting off the phonograph was silent, and Octavia feeling that it wasn't going to spark up back up again anytime soon. With a saddened sigh, she put the phonograph away and checked what else, what else remained inside. The only thing left was an envelope and a, with a piece of paper inside of it. She pulled it out and opened the letter, expecting it to find something written inside but she found in the paper completely blank. A blank letter inside of an envelope. She put everything away and attached her saddle to her back once more. With her everything in place, she stepped up in the wooden door that was attached to the square cement room. She took a deep breath and pushed it open. Octavia's eyes widened as she saw where she was, having to expect it anywhere but here. Lockers lined the hallways that led to classrooms before opening up to the main auditorium. Signs hung around the walls pointing out to directions to the gym, nurse's office, principal's office, and other numerous classrooms that filled the building. It was Ponyville Elementary, just as she remembered it back in her days attending Dana alongside Pinky. It, it can't be, Octavia muttered quietly, stepping forward as the wooden door closed behind her. She glanced around the nostalgic hair hitting her, her core. How many years has it been since she stepped inside these halls? Much like anything else in this town. It was decayed and rusted, with layers of dust covering everything. But she remembered so much of it so easily. She could practically still hear the laughter of bowls playing in the hallways, and the sounds of teachers giving lessons in their classes, and the shuffle of the papers and saddlebags all around them. The constant gossip and rumors that children would share alongside each other. She could still remember Pinky, looking ever so frightened just to be there, encouraged by only the fact that she had her older sister there to protect her. Octavia's hooves felt like they had moved on their own, and she soon found herself standing in front of the principal's office. Without even thinking about it, she lifted her hoof and pushed open the door. Well, Miss Pinkamania Dane Pie, 
We recognize that you have been homeschooled for most of your life, but upon testing you on Ponyville standard tests, your score was not high enough to acknowledge the graduate level pony. So we are requiring you to take at least one more year of public school here in Ponyville. Octavia stared back in shock as the ghostly image of Mayor spoke from behind the desk. In front of her was the chairs that were ghostly images of herself and Pinky as fillies. Listening to the older mayor explain everything to them. In stunned disbelief, Octavia walked out around the images, getting a better look at the scene as it played out. What? I have to go to school! The phantom Pinky deflated in her chair, pouting loudly as she stomped her hooves against the seat. But learning was so boring. Now, sis, the phantom Octavia spoke, her older self turning to look at the filly. It won't be that bad. Just think of all the new friends you'll be able to make, and you'll have more ponies to invite to your parties. Octavia stared at her younger self, seeing the exhaustion racked within her features. There were some clearly visible bags under her eyes, and her hair wasn't nearly as kept as she normally would have kept it. Her voice was clearly haggard with stress and exhaustion, and yet she never spoke about any of her own issues that she was dealing with. Taking care of her sister meant everything to her in that moment. But, but, Pinky responded, looking up at her sister pleadingly. The younger filly was clearly obvious to how tired her older sibling was, only worried about her own issues involving school. Tell you what, Philly Octavia spoke slowly, forcing a comfortable smile on her face. If it's all right with the mayor, I'll go to school with you. How does that sound? Octavia stared at the fence at her younger self, seeing no feeling, just how much she didn't want to do that. How much she was against the idea of going to the public school when her own test scores had meant that she was more than smart enough to have graduated and move on. How desperately she just wanted to be done with it all. And all she was putting those feelings alongside for her younger sister. I don't see why not, the mayor spoke with a smile, nodding her head as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Never once were questioning her why an older sister would go to her sister's elementary school for comfort. Really? Pinky practically sprung up from her seat in excitement and joy. Oh my gosh, you're the bestest big sister ever! The younger filly sprang out from her chair and hugged the, never the older one squeezing her tight as she could with a bright smile on her face. Octavia wrapped in her own arms around her sister and smiled, although she looked down on the ground with a distant, while tired look in her eyes. Anything for you, sis. And with those words, the phantoms evaporate into air, as if being carried off by the wind. The root returned to silence, as Octavia just stared at the scene that had played before her, a lump in her throat, as she felt that the burning sensation of tears in her eyes she wiped her face, swallowing the lump in her throat, and then she looked away. She remembered that scene. She remembered that day. She remembered how tired she had felt from the move, getting Pinky accustomed to the town and into ensuring that she would have a normal life growing up. That was so, so many years ago. Octavia spoke, shaking her head at the memory. What's the point in feeling sorry for myself when I was younger? I became who I am, and there's nothing that can change that. She stepped up from the desk and saw a square blue tile laying on top of it, with a fish engraved into it. Knowing that this was some sort of thing that at this point, she quickly pocketed the tile. With the room otherwise empty, she made her way back out to the school hall. Do you have a habit of visiting schools for foals? A familiar filly's voice spoke up. Octavia turned her head, surprised, seeing Ellie standing in the hallway, lean up against the lockers and looking at Octavia with a bored look on her face. Not practically, Octavia sighed, shaking her head. More often than not, I am seen to find myself in places like this is against my will. Sounds pretty normal to me, Ellie said with a huff, pushing off the lockers and walking off deeper into the school. I don't think anyone wants to come here willingly. Octavia then had a small chuckle as she followed the filly. I don't know. From what I heard from Pinky, Twilight always enjoyed her time at school. She shook her head, and, and and that, if only we were all that lucky. Octavia walked down the school halls quietly, following after the young filly. Neither of them really spoke. Just a scent trail that went so familiarly walked. It wasn't too long before Ellie turned towards the classroom, pushing the door open and stepping inside. Octavia stopped and glanced at the room number. 
realizing it was from her old homeroom from back when she attended. Stepping into the classroom, she was hit with a wave of emotions. Octi! Philly Lee Pinky's voice called out in the phantom image of the young girl, rushing to her across the classroom. Octi, wake up! Pinky demanded, rushing up to Octavia's old school desk. Slumped over in her chair was Philly Octavia, having clearly been fast asleep when the younger Philly looked at her shook her. Ah, uh, huh? Her Philly self sniffled, rubbing her tired eyes before turning to look at Pinky. Oh, hey, sis. Octi, you promised to take me to the party shopping after school today. The hyperactive younger sister said, bouncing on her place. Stop sleeping already and come on. Oh, is this school over? The younger Philly herself yawned, shaking her head softly. I'm sorry, Pinky. I just lost track of time. You're always sleeping on these days, Octi. Why is that? Pinky asked with a tilt in her head. Octavia felt a tug in her chest, remembering the reasons. The stress over moving into a new town, the stress of keeping her sister happy, the stress and the nightmares that had been keeping her from doing a proper test, the stress of working her time with her sister, wasn't looking to scrounge up some extra bitch bits, and the stress of spending those hard, hard earned bits on the food and supplies her younger sister needed for all of her parties. The stress was still being stuck at school for foals. I guess I've been feeling fairly lazy lately, the filly chuckled, deflating Pinky's worries. The bags under her eyes seemed to get heavier for the lie. Come on, let's go to the party store. Yay, party store, party store. Pinky bounced with their usual excitedness. Ness. Long since for getting into any worries, she had her sister's well-being. Philly Octavia let out a sigh and followed Pinky out of the classroom. Their phantoms vanishing into air, leaving the green tile on Octavia's old desk. Were you a good student when you were in school? Ellie's voice spoke up. Octavia turning her head to find the little filly rummaging through one of the desks, clearly looking for something. One of the best. Octavia let out a single dry laugh at that. Slept through all my classes, but I aced everything anyway. Because she had been a lot older than the classmates that had already learned from all their materials they were taught, it wasn't something she was proud of. Were they one of those nerdy know-it-all kids who rubbed it in everyone's faces? Says Ellie asked in annoyance clearly disliking those type of ponies. No, I never tried to be, I Octavia sighed. I kept it to myself and hated every moment, and hated everyone as well. I guess that doesn't make you a completely bad then, Ellie said simply, finding the things that she was looking for. A blank sheet of paper and a box of crayons, having to claim what she had came into the room for, she hopped down one of the desks and made her way out of the room. Octavia watched her curiously, before turning to look back at her old desk stepping up to it. Examining it, she found a green tile that had a carving of a cat on it. With nothing else to do, she tucked the tile away in her saddlebag before quickly exiting out of the room. Her eyes looked down in the hall and saw the edge of Ellie's tail turn off into the cafeteria. Following the filly, she began to hear the echo of voices bouncing off on the walls in the distance. The closer the cafeteria she got, the louder they became, as if the cafeteria was filled with young occupants. It normally would be when it was time for lunch. Looking around the corner, Octavia half expected to find the cafeteria bursting with young foals, given the sound, but only her eyes upon a single phantom image of her younger self sitting at one of the tables. The young Octavia was by herself, eating a simple lettuce and cucumber sandwich all to herself. Suddenly something struck the back of the filly's head, causing her to nearly choke on the bite that she had just taken. Although after a rough swallow, she then lifted up her hoof to her head, flicked away at the spit wad that had been lodged into her hair. She turned around and growled to see more phantom foals emerging, who were all around Pinky's age. Ooh, get something stuck to your hair, one of them cautiously laughed. You really should be more careful. You never know what could be flying around here. Another of the free laughed. The fur put a straw in their mouth before spinning a freshly spit wad straight into Octavia's head. Octavia flinched upon being struck, getting off a deep growl as she brushed the spit wad out of the hair. With anger boiling in her blood, she got up from her seat and walked over to the foals, glaring down hate upon them. You three are asking for trouble, aren't you? The filly Octavia hissed before gritted her teeth. Rather than being intimidated by the free foals, merely laughed at her display. Oh, no, no. Is the other kid mad at us? 
The first full laughed. What is she going to do? Bully us? The second full dramatically placed the hooves against their face as well as mockingly spoke. I can't handle free fools teasing me. I better attack them. I will inform the faculty about your behavior, Octavia snarled, knowing full well that she couldn't lift a hoof on them physically. This fret, however, only seemed to make the free fools laugh harder. Oh no, the older kid's gonna tell the teacher on us, the third fool mocked. She simply should just couldn't ignore us. She should be the one more mature about this whole situation. Octavia went to open her mouth to retaliate, but when something was slammed on top of her head, she suddenly had her entire head was soaked. From the immediate smell and taste that passed her lips, she had just had apple juice carton dunked on her head. This, of course, was hilarious to the free fools who began to run away. Hey, don't take it personally, Octi, the first fool called out. Fools will be fools after all, as they ran off. Philly Octavia stood there in anger, Anger boiling up inside of her until it faded, and she hung her head. She felt it. The shame, humiliation, and bitterness anger, and the sinking recognition that not only she had willingly signed up for this, but it's what she deserved. There would be no reporting the foals that day, or the next day, or the day after that. She simply just taken each humiliation after the other. The long year was finally over, and that she could escape that hellish establishment. The phantom of the Octavia finally faded away, and on the lunch table, where her younger self had been eaten, was on the red tile with a snake carved into its surface. Octavia just stared at it in silence where the images had been, having forgotten just how awful the bullying back had been, and the kids had been right. She was the older one, and she was supposed to brush off these things the children do, and just to move on with their day, especially since she wasn't going to be in school for nearly much as long as Pinky would be. It had been so long ago that she would just forgotten about it all and pushed everything aside. After all, who could still be upset about dumb things that happened at school after all these years? Did you ever draw? Ellie's voice broke the silence. Octavia lifted her head up, spawning the filia table away. Ellie had a crayon in her mouth, doodling away at the piece of paper, as if nothing in the whole world mattered. I haven't since I was a fool myself. Octavia spoke somberly, walking over to Ellie's table. I would doodle in the margins of my worksheet sometimes, but once I got my cutie mark, a lot of the adults seemed to like that. Ellie spoke, putting away one crayon and picking up the other. They get older and they just stop doing fun things. If that's what it means to become an adult, I don't ever want to grow up. Octavia's instinct was to say, it isn't that bad. But for some reason, the words got stuck in her throat. I guess I can't argue with that, she remorsefully muttered. She stepped over onto where the red tile lay on the table and picked it up, taking another moment to examine this time. Each tiles had been a bit of weight in them, and in detail the carvings was rather astonishing. She could feel the small bumps and, and groves that textured on the animal's face and surface. It almost as if it was like a hint of warmth to them almost as if the tiles himself weren't alive. She put the fur tile away, lifted her head to the time to see Ellie hopping up from her seat, and having leaving the paper and crayons behind as well. Curious as to what Ellie's been drawing, Octavia walked over to the sheet of paper and glanced down at it. Depicted by the drawings and the happy little family of four, a mother, a father, and two sisters, one colored in pink and the other colored in gray, the picture was a woolly familiar and yet the forge in the same name. She wondered to herself if perhaps the buildings in the background were meant to be a farm. Octavia shook her head before following after Ellie. Back in the hallway, Octavia looked around, before spawning the familiar silver hairs of Ellie's tail, slipping yet through another classroom. Without hesitation, she walked up to the door, only stepped, stopped once till she read the name of the classroom. The music room. It was a room that Octavia had become all too familiar with for her to stay in Ponyville. After all, this was the very room that she had earned her cutie mark. As if on cue, haunting melody began to play from within the room, um, a melody that Octavia was too familiar with. Lifting the hoof for the handle, she pushed open the door, found the phantom of her younger self near the back of the room, holding a small practice cello for meant for foals. 
She was was pretty much gently strumming along the strings as her younger sister sat a few feet away, in a rapture from the performance. Octavia merely watched as well, stepping into the center of the room and taking a seat for the solo concert. There was an odd feeling to her watching her younger self playing then right before the your eyes, but Octavia could feel the swell of nostalgia, uh, just when pride in her, her chest and the performance. It was just near and dear a piece to her heart, even Beethoven classic. The performance show slowed down and the song neared its end, and the final chord hang in the air before a, before a bow fell from the instrument. Pinky instantly replaced the slow melody with the clapping of her hooves, cheering on from her sister for such a wonderful performance. Gosh, Octi, you're amazing, Pinky said, at once clapping had ended, bouncing up to her hooves. Music is really your super talent. So it is, the Philly Octavia said with a sad smile, gently placing the instrument down. Although, it's exactly that reason I needed to talk to you about, Pinky. Oh, talk to me about what? Her sister asked curiously, suddenly perking up with the bounce. Oh, 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 is it that you're going to play the songs at my parties personally? Because that'd be super duper amazing. Philly Octavia wins a declaration. The older Octavia remembered the feelings, the guilt knowing that it wasn't the case, and the reality that she didn't want to play music for Pinky's parties, the sinking of the dread that she attended nearly every single party Pinky had thrown since they moved to Ponyville. She was so tired of parties. No, 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 not quite, Pinky. Her younger Philly spoke up, waving her hoof around to tell Pinky to calm down. Her sister seemed to get the hint and stopped bouncing in place, tilting her head and confused. You see, Pinky, I have my, a, my special talent now. It's creating music, and I'm quite good at it, and I need to, to nurture that talent. Okay, Pinky responded, suddenly not liking where this conversation was going. So as a result, I've been doing a lot of research on the matter, and Philly Octavia took a deep breath to steal her nerves. For that reason, I'm planning on moving to Manhattan once the school year lets out. What? You're leaving me? Pinky asked, bewildered, shock and hurt and apparent noise. But, 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 but I thought we were going to live here together forever. Pinky, her younger self spoke softly, already had feeling the pain of breaking her sister's young heart like this. I told you when we moved out of here before, didn't I? That I didn't know if Ponyville is where I wanted to live. She then turned around, looking out the window that had been bright on the sunny day. I know that what it is I'm good at, what it is that I want to do with my life. Ponyville is just isn't the town for me that supports my dreams. Philly Octavia sighed, turning back to look at Pinky. I did promise that we would at least stay here until I knew what I wanted to do. And now I know what it is, and I want to do it now. You have a stable place to live. You've got ponies and friends that care about you. And you'll most likely have a job once you leave school and let's out too. But for me, I wasn't really meant to stay here, especially not in this school. It's not even in this town. Manhattan has amazing art programs and so many jobs for musicians. They foster talent and improve creativity. And there are so many opportunities there. If I don't start now, it will only be harder for me when I get older. You understand, don't you? The sad look on Pinky's face spoke volumes, her quivering her lips and tears ready to burst. It made Octavia fear that maybe her sister wasn't going to approve and that it was going she was going to beg and plead for her older sister to stay. And Octavia wasn't so sure if she had it in her heart to keep throwing her down her sister, if she truly begged her with her whole heart. But Pinky didn't say any words like that. Instead, she jumped down, wrapping her hooves around the older filly and buried her face into her chest. You're at least, you won't forget about me, right? Pinky whimpered trying to suppress her sobs as the tears began to flow down her cheeks. No, of course not, sis. I could never forget about you. Octavia returned, wrapping her in her own hooves, and her sister in return. You could write to me as much as you like, and I promise I'll return every letter you send. Pinky nodded at that, squeezing a little tighter. I, I don't want you to go, Octi, Pinky muttered. Octavia's heart nearly freezing at those words. But, but if it's what you really want... I won't stop you. You deserve to be happy too, sis. Octavia felt her eyes begin to water and burn at those words. Lean forward to bury her face in her sister's mane. Squeeze her a little tighter back. The 
Two sat there in a sad embrace before the image of the phantoms faded into the air as well. On the ground where two sisters had been hugging, a pink tile was with a bird engraved on it. It never gets easier, does it? Ellie's voice spoke up. Octavia turning her head to see the filly looking over at the rusted and dusty instruments that lay scattered across the rooms, saying goodbye to family, friends. You have to have friends to say goodbye first to them. Octavia sighed, shaking her head. Family is even harder to say goodbye because of that. How could you have done it? Ellie asked, tilting her head. How have you had to say goodbye? Octavia was silent for a moment, staring at the tail of the bird and an image of freedom, taking flight of going anywhere you wanted, and being able to fly away from danger, of being able to escape from your old hardships and on gentle wings. Or it could be just an easy represent that you were just destined for a cage, a cage to be toyed and a pet for those who were bigger than you. I haven't, Octavia said simply, waking up from the title and picking it up. He, she never said goodbye, not a proper way anyway. The words have never escaped from her mouth, but it's exactly what it meant. Escape. Escape from her troubles. Escape from her responsibilities. Escape from her life. Octavia was a runner. She had always been, and she always will be. Her ears perked up as she heard the wail of a distant siren, lifting her head up to look at the dusty window and into the pitch black outside. The siren grew hesitantly and summer far away, echoing throughout the piercing way in every fold, reality around her. The room itself began to peel away, the grounds and the walls and the ceilings and all the objects in the room, peeling away as if it was old, dried up and paint being picked up by the wind, chipped away bit by bit, floating into the air and disintegrating for nothing, revealing that it always had been hiding just underneath the every walls of the school. A cage, a cage for a bird too desperate to escape. The rusted, bloody steel from that nightmarish world surrounding her once again. The floor gave away into a rust chain length fence that had blo bloodied hooks from the hung from the ceilings. The distorted, ugly party decorations hung loosely from the walls, as if thrown up there without a care in the world. The rancid scent of blood and decat once the it more filled the air. You could try to run, if you think it'll make a difference. Ellie's voice echoed from somewhere far away, from a realm that it was not the one Octavia stood in. But if you do, you are more likely just to end up hurting yourself again. The siren finally died down, and once more a looming sense of dread weighed heavily on Octavia's shoulders. I suppose it never ends, Octavia murmured with a shudder, knowing full well that it was only torment that waited for her. She turned around to face the cold, rusted the steel door, and had replaced with a wooden one. She then took a deep breath, and let out a shuddering breath, and then pushed the door open and stepped out into the hallway.